is what happened to me. This is what changed my attitude. I got my voice taken away from me. And it's the only thing that I ever cared about. And the most important thing. In wrestling, I'll lay on my back for anybody. One, two, three. A writer tries to write a line that I don't like in a promo. I ain't saying it. And I'm going to go talk to Vince because I don't feel like saying it. And Hunter's going to threaten my job. And Triple H is going to tell me I'm going to get fired because I ain't saying this shit. And the company's going to get copyrighted when, I, when we start singing Frank Sinatra. They're going to get fined $45,000. And I'm still going to get handed a fucking microphone the next fucking night. Every single time. So I started living like that. It's like, man, you guys have threatened me. More to, since I got in the door here, you have been hanging it over my head that you will fire me. Since the day I got hired, you have made it seem like it is everything and anything and the only thing. And it is it and the luxury and the be all end all to be here. You're lucky to be here. And in the end, I was looking at him in the face and going, you're fucking lucky to have me here. You weren't working on those eggshells a lot of people were. I didn't walk on any eggshells at the end at all. At all. I didn't dress in the locker room. I changed by myself. When people got mad at me, I didn't care. And I just dealt with Vince. You know, I had plans on dropping my music with the WWE. Yeah. So I was working towards with Neil Lowey, Kevin Dunn, and Vince McMahon dropping my album going or or a single or two going towards WrestleMania. Vince has me out there t tweeting Conor McGregor. I'm about ready to get killed in the world. You know what I mean? This is real world, you know? Like like I pray I don't see Conor, man. Now, I'm not a fighter, bro. Like I'm an entertainer, dude. Vince is saying I believe you. So so you know, <laughs> no, man. Vince has got me. He's giving me the push of a lifetime. He wants me to be the biggest star in the company. Yeah. The first time I ever spoke to Vince McMahon and had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him was when I came back from my concussion. I walked into his offices with a book that I had written. I wrote, I wrote a promo book in NXT that's a couple thousand pages. And then I wrote lyrics on another like 400 pages. So I had like 1,800 something pages of material and I brought it to Vince and I put it down on his I said, Mr. McMahon, uh, I just wanted to let you know that um, for the past five years, you've been investing for me in, in me. As a talent here in the company, I wanted to make sure that I made a major return on that investment for you. And in order to do that, uh, I put my eggs in this basket, obviously not this one. And I showed him my body, you know what I mean? Like physically, like I put my eggs in this basket, not this one, you know, like, and I was in better shape growing up playing football. I used to work out. Like when I became a WWE wrestler, I became a writer, like crazy writer. I told Vince, I said, Hey man, I make music. I've written promos here for since I've been in NXT and now that I'm up here, I want you to know that one day I want to make music and I want to do it with you guys and I want to do it the right way. Now's not the time, but when that time comes, I'll, I will come back. That's all. And I walked off. So that was the first time I ever met Vince. I sat outside of his office what for hours. What do you hours. think about that? He was mind blown. I yeah. think he was taken aback by it. But I showed him this blunt binder. Then fast forward to Toronto at the Airlines Arena. I don't remember what it was for. I had a conversation with Hunter that I don't think that any other talent in the in the business <laughs> has had. <laughs> he ripped me a new one, all right? <laughs> he he went so off, uh, you know, he pulled, uh, pulled me into his office and just went off. And here's what I'll tell you about that conversation. I will never repeat that conversation. But the crazy thing about that is the only person that knew about that conversation in the entire business was Neville because uh, he's my best friend and the only one I told shit to. Because I trust Neville. Hunter, at one point in this conversation, now mind you, I'm working with Vince on the music now with Kevin Dunn and Neil Lowey, and I don't think that that makes my boss, Hunter, very happy. Because ultimately, what Hunter probably feared happened. Me getting in trouble <laughs> the way I did was probably why Hunter, the whole time in NXT and on the main roster, didn't want to give me a push. Because why would he invest all of his money in a guy he thinks he's going to fuck it up? All right? So I remember Hunter and Bray Wyatt would always... <laughs> Bray Wyatt was like my OG, you know, like when I first got in FCW. And he was like, oh, you're going to go down in a ball of flames, boy. He would always, <laughs> always tell me, you're going to go up in a ball of flames. Why did he think that? Because I didn't... I did what I thought was best for my character a lot of the time, I guess, and didn't take advice. I didn't take advice. 
My only advice was don't take advice unless you call up Stone Cold and do it because Stone Cold said so. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was the way I looked at it, man, was I'm not trying to be you. I'm not trying to be Triple H. The closest thing that I can think of that I'm trying to be right now is Stone Cold or The Rock, really, because I'm not trying to marry within the company and be here forever. All right. But there's a life for me outside of this. And I always want to give back to this business wrestling. I'm never going to lose my roots. I'll continue to do shit with wrestling. But like he stood up in that room that day. Well, no, he didn't stand up. We were sitting in chairs and he was going off, man. A, a, a triple H was going off. And he said to me, Enzo, you're not going to change the fucking world. And when he said that, I stood up and shot my chair to the point where it fell if I would have stood up. And I said, don't you get it? I am trying to change the fucking world. To which point Triple H stood up, said there's no getting through to you, boiling hot mad, and he walked me out of that room. And that was the truth. The truth was is that they, my boss, Triple H, Vince, or whoever it was, were looking at me saying... This guy thinks he's going to fucking change the world. Like, what the fuck is he thinking? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I got news for you. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. And in that world, I was trying to change it. They were adhering to principles in that locker room that were written by men that, you know, gender persecution and, and, and you know, um, hazing and things that were going on back in the day that, that they, they don't really adhere to now. But they, but those principles of the locker room and wrestler's court and things like that, man, I just let them know, bro, I'm above it and I ain't in it. So if y'all try to fucking hold me in wrestler's court, just understand I'm not going to be in wrestler's right. court. So if you want to get in the ring with me and do great business and be a good human and or talk to me outside of this, how who are you as a human? You know, you know, I started a nonprofit organization called Report Card Kicks. The only currency we accept is report cards. Uh, you know, it's it's a long story, and I'll get there, and I'm sure I'll be out there talking and promoting it a lot more. But you know, uh, I think that I was the biggest radical that that company had seen in so long. Where the likes of people like me, they're not going to make it easy for. But the crazy thing about me was the fans. If it wasn't for the fans, I would have been fired 10 times over. But Vince liked me. So now I got the I got Vince and the machine, I guess, because if Vince is behind you and you put a title on your waist and he's pushing you on your own program. And you got the fans, which now I'm a heel. Now I don't have the fans, right? But maybe I do. It was a gray area for me. The hopes was to turn me into one of the biggest stars, I guess, in the company. I can't call it. You know, I was about to be with Alexa Bliss. If you want to make Enzo a heel, what's the ultimate way to make him a heel, right? Screw over the girl and go with the skinny girl, right? Like, that is something everyone can relate to. Boy, like, I mean, I think Nia is beautiful. I'd probably choose her over Alexa in real life. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, oh, he screwed her over because he was in the back room hooking up with Alexa when Nia walked in. And he was using Nia as his heater to win his title matches. That's how I become the biggest heel in the company. I don't think Nia or Alexa knew that. I think only Vince and Vince told me that like a week or two before that. And I think that, you know, I would have wrestled for that. I would have never, I, they would have had to fire me. I would have never quit. I would have never quit. I, I mean, my music video 